going to pass this. You guys can look at this. Thank it's kind of so. Testing. We were hanging on just a minute for some extra board members, but if they don't come, we'll start in just a minute. And while we're doing that, we'll make sure we'll read through our letters that we received this evening. Well, it's eight minutes past. Why don't we go ahead and call the Historical Preservation Board meeting uh, of May 15th to order. Denise, do you want to go ahead and take roll, please? Yes. Do Board Member Field. Present. Board Member Fisher. Present. Board Member Grove. Present. And Board Member Bracey. Present. The board members that we are missing tonight are board members Kastner, Miller, Price, and Lady, and Spratlin. Thank you. The agenda has been posted and presented to the board. Are there any changes? Okay. Uh, the third thing on the agenda is the minutes to be approved. Does anyone make a motion to approve the minutes? I'll move to approve. A second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Nobody opposed? Okay. Uh, do we have any public comment tonight on general business? I think Dennis is breaking his. Thank you. Let's see who signed up. Uh, just as a reminder uh, for anybody speaking uh, to the group, uh, come up to the podium. Give your after I call your name, give your name, address, and phone number. Oh, excuse me, name and address, no phone number. Uh, you can speak for three minutes, uh, and you may not get an immediate response on your issue tonight. If you get a yellow card, that means you have thirty seconds yet left and a red card means um, that your uh, three minutes are up. So, Jose, do you want to be the first one to come? No, um, that, that's for the hearing, I think, ma'am. Right. Oh, this is not for general business? No. no. This, okay, this yeah. is, I, excuse right. me, my, uh, excuse me, I, there's nobody for general business. I will call you again in a minute. No, okay. So, um, me, I'm sorry, Madam Chair. Yeah, there was nobody on that list signed up, but it looks like we have somebody who would like to do public comment. Okay, so I can call them now. Just uh, the ones in the public comment form, and that's for the one I gave business. you. It's There's not nobody public. on public comment. Correct. So you can now open it up to anyone who did not sign up for public comment. Public comment only. When for, can we call these people? When we do the public hearing. Okay. These people are public hearing. I'm sorry. Do we have anybody for public comment that would like to speak? Uh, Pam, you want to step forward to the podium and you know the drill. Good evening, members of the Historical Preservation Board. My name is Pam Chadbourne. I live a block and a half from here in the downtown area. So uh, you know that the uh, last time I spoke was about the Littleton mixed use proposal. What? I'm sorry. David, come on. Yeah, yes, I, I, we were just switching around. Sorry about that. Excuse me, Pam, my apologies. Start <laughs> over in your three minutes. <laughs> so I talked about the Littleton mixed-use proposal, and it did appear before you a couple of times, but it was passed still with a four-story massive monolithic 
um, building filling a lot next to the Carnegie Library. And one of the things I heard a member say, uh, Margie Clute, who isn't on the board anymore, was, well, we are supposed to do economic development. It says that in our bylaws or something. Um, that isn't true for a certificate of appropriateness. And if, if Margie Clute's vote was based on that at all, it was incorrect. Because none of the criteria in a certificate of appropriateness has anything about economic development in it. Historical Preservation Board may not approve a COA for economic development. I am furious that uh, that, that Littleton Mixed Use got approved. I don't think it, it's appropriate, um, especially next to the Carnegie Library, and uh, especially hearing that uh, at the end by the chair of the board, or a former chair of the board, was appalling to me. So uh, I want to make a public statement. I, I don't expect board members to vote for economic development on a COA. It is not appropriate to do. It, you are expressly enjoined from doing that. Um, that is not one of the criteria. So um, thank you for listening to me. That has been bothering me. It's going to bother me as I watched that thing be built. Um, so thanks for your consideration. Thank you, Pam. Do we have anybody else that wants to make a public comment? Okay. Uh, now we open the public hearing. Okay, as many of you know, um, the process for the public hearing uh, in just a minute, I'll go through the process and then we'll, uh, we'll open it. Um, we'll open the public hearing. We'll hear from staff and then we'll hear from the applicant or their representative. And then we'll, then we'll hear public comments, Jose. <laughs> and uh, as you know, everybody that speaks gets three minutes. We want you to say your name and address. All comments would be directed to the board. And the applicant can reply to staff or the board, uh, but not provide any additional information. And so they can rebut anything. The public hearing will be closed. And then uh, the board will have a discussion. We'll have a motion uh, to accept, deny, or continue. And it may be accepted uh, with conditions. And you are welcome to stay for the rest of the meeting. But those of you that don't have any interest uh, staying beyond the uh, hearing do not have to stay and we will not be offended so why don't we go ahead and i will open the public hearing for hpb resolution 09217 uh, for adopting a coa for a permanent kitchen at the cult block 2420 west main street so dennis Great. thank you um, as you know the uh, city code talks about the historical preservation board shall approve uh, COA for any proposed work on a historic landmark or any property in a historic district when the following criteria are met. And so there are five criteria, some of which sometimes are appropriate, sometimes are not, do not apply. Um, the criteria are actually pretty simple and they're pretty short, except for one where we get into the design guidelines and then there's a lot more detail. Can you with speak those. a little louder? For oh, some sure. reason, I'm, I'm not hearing you oh, very no, well. It's probably me. So, okay. Thank you, Des. Uh -huh, sure. The first criteria is that proposed work would not detrimentally alter, destroy, or adversely affect any architectural or landscape feature which contributes to its original historic designation. So they're talking about the designation of the property, in this case, the cult block itself, you know, the designation went with that, an inclusion in district. This is not an individual landmark. It is a contributing structure within the historic district, however. And therefore, the design guidelines are the ones that are specific to historic properties. Second criterion is otherwise in conformance with any applicable adopted design guidelines. And this is the one that gets you know, lengthy because you have to go through all the design guidelines and the applicant does this and we do it. The applicant uh, made comments and then we you know, responded. Um, although the proposed kitchen is going to be a freestanding structure, we, we looked at it as an addition to the, to the site and therefore to the landmark uh, property. And so we evaluated similar to an addition and that's the way we looked at it when we're looking through the guidelines. Um, it, and I said before, it's the downtown Littleton Historic Preservation Design Guidelines that we, we use in this case. 
The third criterion is proposed work is visually compatible with designated historic structures located on the property in terms of design, finish, material, scale, mass, and height. And again, because we have the historic property on the site, we typically only have one structure, and so this doesn't often apply. In this case, this will be a freestanding structure, and so this actually does apply in terms of you know, the, the building that's there. Uh, the, in this case, the rear of, of the cult block. You know, what, is this compatible or not? So this one does apply. And the fourth criterion is when the subject site is within a historic district, as this one is, the board must find that the proposed work is visually compatible with the development on adjacent properties as well, not just this property, but also you know, the properties. And when we look at adjacent, we tend to, just by uh, history of what the board has done and what staff has done, we look at a larger scale rather than just the immediately adjacent, but we look at you know, kind of the, the context of the district itself. So the location of this is, as you know, it's as you said, Madam Chair, it's 2420 West Main Street. So it's on the south side of Main Street. It's just to the west of Prince Street, um, between Prince and Nevada. Um, you can see it there in the, in the purple. It's next to the Old Town Tavern and, uh, and uh, on the south side. And then it, to the south of it, you can see the parking lot uh, that belongs to this property, and then the alley, and then you can see the post office building and the post office's parking lot to the south there. This is the third COA uh, for this property in the last uh, year or so. Uh, the, COA, the first COA was uh, July 18th, 2016, came to the board, and that was for the alteration of the front and the rear facades of the building. So on lower right, you see the historic uh, photograph of the building as it originally was designed. It was designed with uh, several storefronts. And over the years, it was just a, a whole assemblage of uses that were in there and, and retailers that were in these properties. Um, and the configuration of the storefronts changed from time to time. Uh, they'd get larger and smaller depending on what the, the needs were of the individual retailers. And then the most recent is, is the Jose's restaurant on the upper left. The COA also looked at the addition of a rear patio uh, wall, mural, and gates for a food truck. So on the left, you see the, uh, the alley and the side of the building when it was Jose's restaurant um, with the door and the materials, the flat roof, um, and the parking spaces that were there. And then on the lower right, you can see what the design was. And that was a mural that has been placed on the fence itself um, and went through the uh, Littleton Fine Arts Board for approval on that and got a, a grant, partial grant from the city uh, for that that mural as well. The second COA was January of this year, and that were changes addressed um, structural issues that were discovered. You know, when the original plan was approved and, this, and the design was approved, it included using some some features that were, and when they got into it, were not were not there or wouldn't work structurally. And so they came back to the board and made those changes and made some changes to the original design of the facade. So it was looking just at the front facade, uh, didn't make any changes to the rear. So here's what the project looks like completed um, with, the, with the two COAs. Um, and then this is the third COA. And this is going to look at changing the wall and the rear patio to add a permanent kitchen. What is found in the applicant uh, who's still running, he's stuck in traffic, but he's on his way. Uh, but our architect is here, so the architect for the for the applicant is here, so he, he can speak to this and answer any questions you have as well. Um, but the business has been far more successful and far more oriented towards food than they anticipated originally. Uh, and so the percentage of business is much greater, and so the demands on the kitchen are much greater than they anticipated. And the, using the food trucks has run into some just functional issues as well as not meeting the needs of the expansion of the business that they, uh, that they have found. And so they're now looking at an alternative to that. They want to provide a permanent kitchen rather than a food truck and, and put that on site. And so that's a proposal. Um, the uh, second, uh, this is the site plan uh, as it's currently proposed with the, um, the storage container uh, recessed from the alley with two parallel parking spaces in from the alley. Uh, and then some additional seating space between the storage container and the existing patio. There's a, a blow up of what that looks like with the patio seating expanded uh, and two parallel parking spaces. They have four currently and four that were 
uh, that we're looking at in, in the last proposal that came to you a month ago. And at that point, you may remember they asked for the applicant asked for a continuation because they want they were looking at redesigning the proposal. They had found some issues uh, with the earlier proposal and thought this would work better, and so they wanted to come back to you with this and get your your take on on uh, this particular proposal with using a storage container in this location. Um, and again, the two parallel parking spaces south and the mural stays in its current location the way it's currently proposed. And so it'll remain on the wall. It's you know, taller than the storage container. Um, and so you can see it back behind there with the seating area behind it as well. And again, this is the elevation drawings and the photos. You should have all this in your packet. And again, elevation drawings, what they're proposing. And again, the architect is here. And then photo elevations, again, in terms of materials and colors and what they're, what they're thinking of. Again, this is the changes to the alley. This is the alley condition when uh, this was Jose's restaurant. And now this is what the alley condition is currently. This is with the built, the wall built. You can, uh, because of the sunlight, it's hard to see, but you can see the cupola of, of the courthouse on the wall there uh, built into the screen as part of the art piece. And then you can see the gates that were added uh, on the right for the food truck to, to open, that was open up and then the food truck drives in there. And then there's a, a doorway in and out, two doorways in and out of the, of the patio from the alley. Uh, and of course they use it you know, for their uh, dumpster as well, and trash dumpsters, everything else just in terms of the way the alleys are used. So that's the way it is currently. And again, the criteria, we've got these four criteria that the board needs to look at. We looked at it as staff. Um, and staff recommendations, we, we recommended having looked at the criteria, we believe it does meet you know, the, the four criteria. Um, we think it's an interesting proposal and, and we're recommending approval on it. We have received comments and you have copies of all those and I think Denise has an additional uh, set of comments that came in after the five o'clock deadline that we have. It came at 5.30, but she made copies of, a copy of that as well. Uh, staff will make hard copies of any comments that come in. Uh, it can go into the packet. If they get in early enough, we'll send those out in the packets. And I think you've got at least one set of comments with that. Um, and the board may elect to take a, a break. Uh, meeting will continue, but you want to take a break so that the board can actually read those. And then following the meetings, the comments will be posted on the development activity list on, online with the city's website. So that's presentation. The, app, uh, the architect is here. Applicant, the uh, owner is not here yet, but the, the architect is. Any questions for me before you get into public? You know, open up to the public from the board. I was curious, and I could ask the applicant: Was there any discussion of using the current kitchen since this oh, was a I, restaurant? I think we want to wait on that. Just questions for me right now. So I'm okay. sorry until he gets his. I didn't know if you talked about them. Okay, sorry. Anything else? Any questions? I have two questions, just okay. procedural. Okay. Um, I want to make sure that uh, we are okay if we reference the previous COA that he requested a continuation. Because this on. is a continuation of, of that, yes. Yeah, okay. So that came in at you know, the April 17th meeting, and then this is a continuation of that public hearing. So okay. So with revisions. And the other is, um, you mentioned that the mural um, was funded with grants. A grant from the city, yes. Yeah. Partially funded. Yeah. It was partially funded. But it, um, tell us uh, who gets those grants for the city. Is, is that for... Um, public art that is visible to the public? This actually is a grant program that doesn't exist any longer, so it, it was for that initially, right? It was trying to uh, activate public spaces, and so yeah. So it is, is for art that's intended to be viewed by the public Correct. and not from Correct. a private Correct. They have a contract for that grant, too, for, for that um, that needs to be met as well in terms of visibility and all those things, too. So that's, that's part of the contract. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions for Dennis? Okay. okay. Thank you, Dennis. Thank you. All right, and we'll go ahead and hear from uh, the applicant or the representative. My name is Eric Glaze. I'm with Studio 646 Architecture at 15940 South Golden Road in Golden. Um, Zach has been texting me all night, uh, speaking of his predicament of being stuck in traffic. I'm assuming he's not going to make it here, so uh, he has to uh, apologize on his behalf. Um, but Dennis described what we've gone through in the design process very well. 
Um, this process has been an evolution of the design. Um, our, our first attempt, uh, our first submittal, which was uh, continued to tonight, um, was in an effort to um, put a kitchen, a permanent kitchen, back in Jose's. Um, and we didn't really know how um, HPB would react to a shipping container in the alley. So our first effort was to design something that, that might work uh, in the alley, something that was a uh, unique design, something that would uh, accommodate the need for a kitchen, and uh, talk to your group to see how that would be um, received in the, in the alley of the, of uh, behind the building. It's called the alley, and it's in the alley. So, um, so uh, after we talked with planning, we worked with Dennis, um, we thought that maybe the, the two-story structure that was originally proposed uh, uh, last month was maybe too um, imposing, a little too large for the alley, maybe a bit out of scale compared to the building to the next building next to it and uh, the existing building. Um, so we actually decided, well, let's pull that back and try to make it a single story structure. So this continues to be an evolving design because uh, now we're here uh, seeing uh, this, this building location and kitchen meets um, our logistical problems, but now we have to discuss um, whether a shipping container in the alley still meets uh, the um, HPB's expectations for a design element in the alley. And we're, we're, we're putting this in the alley as a somewhat unique statement, uh, kind of um, giving, uh, displaying what the character of the tavern is and also, um, we're, we're trying to continue to activate the alley by putting some storefront windows and a service entrance, uh, not service entrance, but customer uh, access in one of the sides of the alley, which uh, the rear will have a, a small window and the, the side of it will have a, s a service door and allow for walk-up customers to come to that uh, container to... Uh, I, I think they're selling breakfast burritos at this point, so that will continue to happen. And then the entrance will be on the um, west side, uh, the main entrance, so they're still encouraging uh, visitors to enter from the alley, which they are getting quite a bit of traffic coming directly in from the alley side of their uh, current operation. Um, one of the, uh, as, as we mentioned, it's been an evolving design. The original intent was to, uh, the original intent was to divide the existing Jose's into half an office for bristlecone construction, and the other half was going to be a, a tavern with a revolving food truck service. Through the design of the building, um, they decided they would Cap, uh, better capitalize on revenue if they opened their own food truck. So they had a food truck made and built and, and brought the food truck in, and they're operating their own kitchen out of the food truck, which became an operations issue in that they have to cart their uh, wastewater off-site from the kitchen. Um, they have to uh, temporarily plug in into the building with uh, extension cords and cables. So it's, it's become... Uh, not as uh, clean of a operation as they wished. So, so in in, uh, in their review, they're wanting to uh, establish a more permanent kitchen condition, which would the shipping container would be electrically hardwired in. It would be uh, permanently plumbed into the to the existing infrastructure of the building, and it would have a kitchen that's suitable for the volume of of customers and demand that they have currently, uh, and which is increasing as the warm months, uh, as we're getting into the warmer months. So it's really uh, an, an idea for a permanent solution. At this point, the owner, uh, Zach Smith, is he's looking for the right solution. So that's why part of our idea was to um, continue to this month uh, so that we could tweak the design, hear from your group, and then Perhaps if we need to tweak again, 
Um, he, he's more interested in, in taking the time to make everybody happy because there's so many different moving pieces here and, and review and approval agencies. Uh, so this is kind of our first official stop on, on our tour of approvals. Um, it was mentioned about the, the Arts District uh, grant. Uh, we also have, uh, we have to talk to them as well about whether the um, existing mural is visible enough. We do have, uh, the, the container is, is uh, not completely covering the site, but there is quite a bit of exposure to the mural from uh, the west side of, of the container and it is taller than the shipping container by um, the the mural is 14 feet tall and the container is eight and a half feet tall. So it, it's quite a bit taller. So there's there are several different pieces and approvals that we have going in motion. Um, we would love to hear your, your group's thoughts on the idea of a container. How does it relate historically to an alley in, in Littleton? Um, so that's basically uh, uh, where we're at. You had asked why don't we use the existing kitchen. That's been taken out with the goal of having um, food trucks and rotating food trucks from different companies. So at this point, the kitchen's been taken out, the plumbing's been removed, the grease trap has been filled with sand and taken out as part of our um, uh, approvals with Tri County Health, so it's 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 uh, at this point it's gone. It's taken by office space and and tavern seating. So that that's uh, uh, if there were if there were space available, I'm sure they would take it. But uh, right now they're maximized on office space and uh, tavern space. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Questions? Are we going to be able to ask questions of the applicant later after we hear the public comment? Not, I, I don't think so. If the this, yeah. unless we continue, now would be the time to ask the applicant questions. Okay, go ahead. I have several. Um, are you the architect that did the last COA application? Yes. Well, I found that um, that uh, design to be, it was very exciting to me, and I was very much looking forward to coming and discussing it um, with the board and seeing what people thought. Um, I'd like to know why, uh, a little bit more detail on, on why you um, chose to uh, change this so radically, uh, especially with the um, orientation. I understand the second story. I think there were some other issues. But why did you position um, the uh, uh, kitchen in this rendering um, the way that you did as opposed to a, a kind of a side loader to the, the building? We had some, as we started getting into the the details of the design. We have some pretty strict requirements for ventilation on a commercial kitchen as it relates to a property line. So we have to, for instance, be approximately 10 feet away from a, a, a shared property line with any ventilation. So that was one big reason. Uh, the container is eight feet wide. I think we're a couple feet off of the property line. So we're really having problems making a container with ventilation coming out of it. It, it didn't have the, the width to be able to offset those exhaust uh, terminations without it sticking out of the building and coming up in some strange form. So we're really having issues with that. We're having issues with existing power lines coming across in that location. And um, from for, for those reasons, we looked at it rotated around the back as um, as another statement visual statement to the uh, to the perpendicular uh, orientation and then is this a an actual repurposed shipping container or is this shipping container look 
It would be a it would be a physical literal shipping container. Did this one ever sail on the seven seas, or was it built for the purpose of? Shipping I have a little history with shipping containers. Um, where we're looking for a shipping container, they are shipped. <laughs> there's there's different. Uh, uh, they sell them based on how many trips they've made. Um, a one-time shipping container essentially makes one trip, and it's the most expensive. It, it goes from its origin and gets filled and comes across uh, from wherever and uh, is, is, is in the best condition. So we're probably looking at those type of shipping containers that are used but aren't made just for, for this project custom on-site. So it would be that one-time shipping container that would be in the best shape, uh, but still actually have but it's a real shipping container. a shipping container correct and, and it would be a one-time shipping container that's what we're looking at and then the range is you know it goes from you know four to five thousand dollars for that one time and then the two or three times the prices continue to drop dramatically because they get beat up abused and and pretty ugly uh, each trip it makes so um, that's our goal would be that one-time shipping container. But yeah, that we 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 always discussed using a real shipping container as part of the design. I have more questions, but I'll let other people talk. <laughs> um, one question I had was uh, the existing art um, facade there with the with the printed image. Is there any constraints uh, that we may not be aware of that would prevent that being located in front of the shipping container, thus fronting the alley? Um, there are not, it, they can, that could be part of the discussion. Uh, we've obviously the, the desire would be from a cost perspective, uh, the constraint to moving it directly up is there's some neighboring, uh, power lines feeding the neighboring building. So it could be moved up in some manner, but it would, it would mostly be a, a cost related issue and, and. Um, you know, finding enough space to actually try to accomplish what we're trying to accomplish because we'll we'll keep on moving that container back to find room for that mural wall. Um, so it's, you know, this is our first attempt. At, this is the best and ideal design for us. Um, but if it doesn't work out with the different groups that are looking at it, then there are, um, it's, it's possible to move it. When you say the different groups, I'm like planning commission or whatever. So, what would other options be? You ha we had the one last time. I mean, if this for some reason doesn't work out, what would the other options be? Well, I think our next um, one of our next things is to is to talk with the um, arts arts district and about that grant and see how they view the location of the mural as is in the current design. And to talk to them about um, whether it's visible enough uh, or whether they want it more visible. And um, as David brought out, you know, what are the constraints? Well, we could do anything. Uh, it just depends on how much money it costs. But <laughs> that's, that's kind of the, the, the next step is to talk to the arts group. And then I think once we feel like we have everybody in harmony with a, a path that we're going down is then we formally submit to planning and kind of keep the wheels rolling as, as far as ironing out the rest of the technical details. Um, what would be the other options besides the, the container where, it's, where you're proposing now? Well, we haven't formally submitted on an option, but another option we've discussed internally whether we relocate the, the mural wall and leave the container as we show it right now and, and maybe move the mural wall to a more prominent location. Is there any thought of painting the container? Yeah. We would we would most definitely paint something on it. Whether and that would be another discussion with um with the with the arts group is is decorating it, painting something on it to continue to activate the alley and, and uh, work to create a more appealing alley uh, experience. Does that 
uh, container then not allow for the parking in the back there? Does it take out the parking spots? So the location we have, um, we are showing two parallel parking spaces along the container for accessible parking. And then currently, Bristle Cone, or Zach with Bristle Cone in the alley, has the old Jose's parking lot uh, leased for a period of five years. Um, so right now, he's accomplishing his required park, his parking requirements through that off-site uh, parking lot. I have more questions. Go ahead. Is, is there a shelf life to the container? I mean, it, does it, how does it wear? What are the plans to keep it? There, um, with everything else, there's maintenance. Uh, if you don't maintain the right. paint, if you don't maintain uh, the structure, it deteriorates. But they're pretty resilient. Um, they're made out of a material that is an, a Corten material. It's a natural weathering material uh, underneath the paint. So it, it's it's a pretty sturdy structure. It's more sturdy than wood, less sturdy than concrete. It would be placed on a concrete base. Okay. So all the utilities can come up from underneath and uh, not uh, freeze and, and some other things. So it's, it's going to be built as a permanent structure. Um, we've designed a couple of other uh, shipping container um, installations, and they're pretty tough. They're, they're made to go across the ocean and uh, weather the salt water, salt air, and, and different conditions of being lifted and moved around. So they're pretty, they're pretty uh, durable. So um, that's why we're part of the reason of choosing the shipping container is the unique application of it in the alley and the, its durability and uh, um, its longevity. I have a couple more questions. Okay. Um, you mentioned uh, possibly painting the, the shipping container. Um, doesn't painting the shipping container kind of defeat the whole aesthetic of, of container architecture? Well, I don't, I don't think we... Isn't it about honesty of materials? I, I agreed. And I don't think we would cover the whole container with a single color, like we're painting a wall. But we would have a more... Um, I think what, what we've proposed is uh, uh, part of it covered, and not the whole thing, but part of it covered with an uh, artistic mur mural of, of sorts. Something well, I guess that's my question. I mean, doesn't that kind of defeat the, the whole vibe of the shipping container if you're you know, painting I, flowers I, on I it? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, because the shipping container is pretty... Um, it's pretty unique. It's it's a very deep corrugated yeah. wall system. It has the the big uh, latch doors on the end. So a container, even if you paint it with camouflage, it's it's going to look like a container shape and size and and uh, materiality, even if there's part of it. Now we we would we didn't intend on painting the whole thing. Like we we had showed maybe part of it or a corner painted. Um, so the, the rest of the container would be in its uh, relatively natural state. Uh, we would be more providing uh, something more than a, a, a blank wall of a shipping container. So we wanted to activate it a little bit. So um, a shipping container is pretty, um, pretty obvious as a shipping container. Yep. We're just looking to enhance it a little bit. Okay. Um, and, and you mentioned um, activating the alley. Aside from a back door, a rear entrance to the alley, mm -hmm. uh, the bar of the alley, mm -hmm. um, how does that, you know, putting this container wall, how does this, can you speak to activating the alley a little bit? So uh, part of it was to get the walk-up traffic to the window in the side. And I, I think with one of our elevations we're showing the side of the container that would have the, the windows, the, the east side would have the windows, which would be visible from prints. The whole installation is, is pretty visible from, from prints. 
this this first elevation on or rendering on the left showing the sign of the alley and the the glass part of the container is quite visible from print. So I think from that perspective, we would be um, having the same visibility from from prints. But then um, you know with the uh, with the walk up traffic and maybe the paint uh, that's already, the walk-up traffic that's already happening and the addition of some uh, walk-up traffic and the visibility of the walk-up traffic from prints, we're hoping to kind of build on that. This is not a facade question, but what about uh, heating, cooling? I mean, what, what is it like to work in one of these things? <laughs> It's similar to a food truck, where it's it's the similar size and shape to a food truck, so it's quite similar. Um, so we'll have ventilation um, coming off of the building, and there will be some kind of a heating unit inside the building. So it, it's it stays climate controlled, temperature controlled, um, with. Uh, and there's going to be plumbing in in the uh, underneath the building, so it's it's going to feel and act like a permanent building, but have the size constraints of a of a food truck. Okay. Any other questions? I do have one more R relative to where the food truck parks now. Uh, could you help me understand how the orientation of the container is going to be different? So the food truck, as it parks right now, I think Dennis showed a slide where it showed the gate um, coming perpendicular from the alley into the building. So that's how the food truck parks right now. Oriented. And we're rotated so that we're coming across the alley. Okay. And um, the, the food truck coming perpendicular into the building is also a bit of an issue um, with, the, uh, with some electrical requirements as we were constructing the the new building and renovating the existing building um, we had to put in some new electrical panels that that were uh, not required when Jose's was originally built which had clearances so it kept backing up that food truck and the back end of it sticking out of the the, the, the gate right now so that was part of part of our discussions on how do we resolve the look of kind of a food truck with its um, rear end sticking out of the, uh, the the gate, which was not intended, and cleaning up some of the uh, the electrical connections and cleaning up some of the just from an uh, an appearance from the alley, just to clean all that up and look at make it look a little more established and and polished. Anything else? Okay. Thank you very much. Appreciate Thank you. it. So now we'll take public comments or questions. And I think we talked about, so the first person is Jose. Now, if you would like to come up and state your name, address, and speak to us for three minutes. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I am Joseph Jose Trujillo. I uh, am a native of Littleton. I moved into the building that they're talking about now in 1976. And what I did when I went in, we stretched the building 16 feet, and it was primarily for just the back entrance uh, storage. We had the two big coolers for the kitchen, and uh, we... Uh, put about 160,000 into stretching the building and doing the front. And we got a merit award for it, it's a very nice building. But uh, through the years, you know, we, we had, uh, when we first opened, we were serving uh, 4,200 4, people a week. I had 43 employees that you're not gonna see anymore because at least now, in those days, you could park somewhere. 
I seriously, I was kind of hoping that they would use the facility as it was and just update all of the equipment in there. That's, everything was in place, but that didn't happen. I uh, object to this big container out there. It'd be like a Mayflower bringing one of their big trucks and parking in front of your house. And you're going to say every morning, oh boy, that looks nice. And I understand that they talk about two narrow spaces in there. That would probably be for the trucks coming in to make deliveries. And it has its problems that I can see. I was, I was hoping that uh, the food truck would work out for them. And apparently it hasn't. You know, it it's, didn't seem big enough to me for what they wanted to do. And I don't know if this is going to increase it at all. But I am just opposed to having that big unit right there by the, that alley, particularly. And uh, that's my feelings. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Second person that wants to speak is Paul Bingham. Good evening, board. Thank you. Uh, my name's Paul Bingham, 236 West Delaware Circle. Been there 54 years. <clears throat> Out of that 54 years, I spent 41 of it eating with Jose at that restaurant. It was a wonderful place. <clears throat> um, some comments just from this evening, in addition to what I've written down here. Let me pass this out. Thank you. Just listening tonight, this sounds like a big experiment. <clears throat> I think when we're going off to build a building, we get out the drawing table and CAD CAM machine and whatnot and figure out all these different variations on the paper where it's cheaper than sawing up boards and whatnot. Um, I think that's what should be done here. Uh, I agree with all the uh, letters in the uh, in the packet that you got ahead of time. Um, I also think that there's a whole bunch of things that this doesn't agree with that the staff has put up. They um, said as much. Uh, the parking thing, I thought this was going to be a big problem with their parking that they didn't have very much of. Apparently they have the, the lot over in Alamo. Um, <clears throat> A massive modern metal corrugated shipping container is not visually compatible with the post office, which is across a narrow alley from the pro proposed insulation. And it's been noted by the developer that this is very, very visible from um, Prince Street. The applicants took a fine restaurant, former Jose, and split it into a long office next to a long, narrow bar. Uh, we've eaten there lately and were surprised when the food came in from a trailer in the alley. <clears throat> Probably within a couple years, if they ever get anything built down there, they would like the historic district to approve a modern, massive metal storage and shipping container external to the original restaurant added to the alley and very visible next to the post office and determined that this modern monolithic metal block is historically appropriate and compatible. An appropriate cho choice would be to restore the kitchen inside the original historical valid, historically valid structure and find some new office space somewhere else. Per city code 4-6-14, I request you folks this <coughs> disallow this certificate of appropriateness for the shipping container. Thank you. And thank you very much for your service. Thank you, Paul. And Pam? Can somebody make this work for me? Okay. And then do I have to do something to make it
Yeah, that's okay, thanks. Um, three minutes, don't have enough time, Historic Preservation Board, but please disallow the COA. Shipping containers are not valid in a historic district that's meant to, to uh, recall the 1800s and the 1890s. Um, this would be great elsewhere. It might be exciting elsewhere in Littleton. That is not why you should approve it. That, in fact, is a reason that's irrelevant to improving it. So let me note a couple of things in the staff report. Um, first of all, it didn't refer to the downtown uh, design standards and guidelines, and it should have, because it's going for an SDP. And they are applicable. The downtown standards and guidelines, design standards and guidelines are applicable. There are about 15 items that I included in the letter that I sent you from that document that this violates. So it may not be approved because by their criteria two, by your criteria two, you may not approve it. It does not fit. It does not comply. It does not conform with the downtown design standards and guidelines for sub area six, the Alamo area. Um, I don't know why that wasn't in the staff report, but it wasn't. And again, for criteria three, the staff report did not include whether it was visually compatible to the post office. Extraordinarily, the post office is far more important to the historic value of downtown Littleton than this. It is a corner structure on Alamo, and I'm not sure I, um, again, I think I highlighted this elsewhere, but um, desired character says, so it can be contemporary so long as a complementary relationship is maintained with the historic post office. So there are so many things. This is a flat, massive side. It has no windows. It has no cornice, which is explicitly called out for in the design guidelines. Um, there's no, the window may be on one side, but that side that faces the post office is very visible from prints, is just a flat, corded metal. There's nothing about this that was around in the 1800s. This didn't happen in the 1800s. It does not belong in the district. It does not belong. In a COA, if you establish a precedent, uh, it is a disaster. Um, so I think I tried to make my basic points. Um, I sent you um, tons of stuff from the design guidelines, and um, my printer is um, not great, but a couple of them were standards. And um, maintain an overall sense of relationship um, with adjoining or nearby buildings, and it says how to do that, and this does none of those six things. And it shall respect traditional design principles of older buildings along Alamo. This does not conform, and you may not give it a COA. Thank you very much, Historical Preservation Board. Right, Thank Pam. you, Pam. Is there anybody else that is planning on speaking? Okay. All right. So um, did uh, the applicant or his architect want to address any of the issues that were brought up by the public? Is there anything else you wanted to say based on what the public mentioned? Um, part of our consideration was we, we reviewed the design guidelines. We reviewed the historic district uh, on the street side. Um, as we walked down the alley and kind of looked at the the alley elevation streetscape, um, it, it has clearly a different appearance on the alley side than the pedestrian street side, uh, the main street side. So... Um, in a lot of ways, uh, there is not a uh, recognizable historic pattern along the alley. So when we designed the container, we, 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 we designed it toward uh, the scale of the alley, and um, we looked at the alley from a perspective of where, or the container from where it's gonna be visible from print where it is visible. So we created windows on that side and, and created some um, ideas of our artistic 
renderings on the, the front of the container. So um, this is our, our uh, interpretation of an alley, uh, whether it's in a historic district or not. Uh, we, we feel that we uh, fit in very well with an alley, uh, an, an alley location. So that, that's, that's kind of our uh, design concept and, and our look at uh, how, an, how a container fits in the alley. Thank you. Okay, what we're gonna do is go ahead and close the public hearing. And I'd like to take this opportunity to take a short break so that we can make sure that we've read through all of the letters and have that. And then when we come back, then we go straight to motion. Correct? We, are, my understanding is we can't have a discussion before the motion. Uh, there can be a motion and then you have a discussion uh, pursuant to that motion. Okay, so we have to, we have to go straight to motion. Uh, we've been encouraged by our board and commission leadership to make sure we adhere very closely to the rules um, uh, in, in order of running a public meeting. So let's go ahead and that public meeting will be closed and we'll take five minutes to read through the letters. Uh, Madam Chair. Yes, Kim. Um, may I ask a question of Dennis? Just to... You may. Uh, Dennis, could you just state what the period of significance is for the historical district? It, it's, it's a broad period of significance. It actually it goes from the 1800s up until the 19... 50s and 40s, I guess it was, 48, I think, yeah. So it, it's a broad period of significance, going, getting to the automobile age, going all the way from the early agricultural days. So it's unusual, I think, in terms of that, because we have not only structures, uh, but also just the history that it, it evolved uh, as the highway was moved and, and Littleton changed. So it, it's broader than some. It's, it's a broad period. All right, thank you. Okay, we'll go ahead and start our break.
much, Kitty. Thank you. It's hard to believe we're wearing linen already. I know. You won't be wearing linen on Are we almost, have you had a chance to go through? Okay. Why don't we go ahead and resume uh, the meeting. And Andrea just went to get us a copy of the design guidelines. I left mine at home. So let's move to motion. Madam Chair, before we proceed, I just wanted to, for the record, let it be known that I had a, a, a discussion with Dennis that was not pertaining to this matter at hand. Uh, oh, so okay. On, on Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So, uh, appreciate that. Okay, so uh, we will move to motion. Uh, does anybody want to uh, make a motion? Then we'll discuss it. And Brandon, the motion may pass or fail or continue or whatever, and then we could make another motion if we wanted. Correct. Um, someone can make a motion to uh, anything you can do, right? So approve, deny with conditions, and that opens up the discussion. It can be later be amended, withdrawn, a new motion could be put out, however you wish to proceed. Okay. So uh, let's go ahead and uh, I will ask for a motion, and that would be on page... Six, again, approve, deny, or continue. It's hard to do this without discussion first. It is, but that's what we're supposed to do. Thank you. Oh, here it is. I mean, you can, have, you can poll the board and see what types of motion you want to make. You have some generic discussion. We're allowed to have generic discussion? Correct. But we think once it's going a particular way, we'd, we'd ask there be a, a motion um, one way or another, and then in-depth discussion. Okay. So just kind of at the high level, what are we thinking about the this container? And, and we always look at things in light of the criteria that we have, the criterion that we have set forth here. Uh, I, I have some concern with the with the current proposed uh, design. And specifically, what are your concerns? Uh, mostly relating to um, seeing proof of mass, scale, height. Uh, some of the elevations weren't real clear on how that pertains across the block there, across the back, and how it pertains to each building throughout that uh, rear facade of the of the block. Um, as well as, um, and it's a little bit of a gray area, not sure how it relates to um, the criteria, um, but about that activation of the alley and how this mass would hinder that, perhaps. Okay. Thought, any other thoughts? Well, we're s supposed to consider visual compatibility, mm -hmm. and I, I have some concerns with that as well. My concern had um, to do with the character of the alley, which is part of the first criteria. Uh, also, with respect to, um, it would be more contemporary in nature and not uh, really compatible with the facade, although it's out of the back. And then the adjacent properties. The post office was mentioned, but also the properties on each side. So that's those are my concerns. My concerns aren't so much with the compatibility with the alley, which is today very utilitarian. There are dumpsters there. There are trucks parked there. But I am concerned about blocking the publicly funded artwork currently on the mural. I think I may suggest at this time, it seems like we have a direction. If you want to pull the board and... Uh, do a motion at this point. You have an in-depth discussion about how, why or why not it meets criteria. Can we poll first? You may. Okay. Do we want to use the informal poll? Not okay. Informal poll. Um, so our choices are um, 
approve, deny, continue, and um, if we approve, we can always approve with conditions. So, Kim, do you, which way are you leaning? I'm not inclined to approve this current design, the current design. Amy? I'm not inclined to approve right now. I think we still have some questions that, that we need to see answered, so. Okay. Jolene? I'm not inclined to approve. I'm not inclined to approve as well. And I agree with the board. So does somebody want to put forward a motion? And I think our motion is to deny. Go to our motion page. I will if you could hand me the language. Okay, yes, I will. Uh, motion to, here, wait a second. Let me get it for you. Okay, thank you. Okay, I move to deny HPB resolution 09-2017 concerning the Certificate of historical appro Historic Appropriateness for the Culp Block at 2420 West Main Street. The foregoing denial is based on the findings that the pr proposed work um, let's see, read all of them, include all of them. Um, one does not detrimentally alter, destroy, um, I don't think I'm reading the right stuff. No, I, I think oh, you're right. Okay, it's not. Okay, does not detrimentally alter, destroy, or adversely affect any architectural board uh, member field. I believe does. Okay, no. that's what I thought. Um, does detrimentally alter, destroy, or adversely affect any architectural or landscape feature which, do, which contributes to the original historic designation is not in conformance with the Littleton Downtown Design Standards and Guidelines, is not visually compatible with designated historic structures located on the property in terms of design, finish, material, scale, mass, and height, is not visually compatible with the development on adjacent properties. Thank you. Uh, do we have a second? I second. Do you want to open up for discussion and you know go into detail about why? Yeah, I, I think it's only fair for the applicant. So let's go through all the criteria and start at the beginning and then have discussion about each one. Um, so the first one, on page four about it does not uh, alters, destroys, or adversely affects any agriculture or landscape feature which contributes to its his original historic designation. So in terms of what our thinking about that and how it changes things. I, I don't see this as, you know, it doesn't attach to the existing building. It doesn't um, alter or affect that by any means. So I have no um, objection to that. Um, criteria. I think it meets that criteria. I agree. Yeah. Okay. Same. So the second criteria, uh, hold on. I'm not finding it quick enough. It's conformance. Oh, it's otherwise it's in conformance with any applicable adopted design guidelines. There's not a lot of information in here, so we might have to look at some of the sections. Oh, here, three dash two. Minimize loss of historical significant features when planning an addition. Does not damage or obscure architecturally important features. So what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I think there's a case that it does obscure. Um, you know, perhaps something that, um, is relevant to the alley. Um, architectural features it does. I think additions have some leeway of doing so, um, but I think it's the, the art wall that really, um, I think that's the concerning factor here for me. I think I'd like to see a plan for dealing with that. Yeah, I think that um, it, it really takes publicly funded art and puts it in a private space. Exactly. And I think it's gonna be fabulous for the customers of the alley 
and I am a joyful customer of the alley frequently, but um, I, I do think that uh, it, it really closes that off from public viewing. You can catch glimpses of it, but mm -hmm. it, will, it will not be enjoyed by the public, per se. It also kind of obscures the back of the building. Did you have something you were going to say? Just a clarification that it was possible to add that as a condition that they have approval from, from the board uh, on, the, on the mural. Uh, so that's something you could add as a condition that you would uh, approve it or, or disapprove it. But if, if you do approve it, uh, you'd say that would be a condition. It has to be approved by the board, Fine Arts Board. We could, but we don't have to. I would question, you know, that, that mural is really designed for that, that particular location. And to take it and move it closer to, you know, passers-by or, or something like that, um, you know, really affects the integrity of the, the piece, in my opinion. Okay, another aspect of it, it should be compatible with the main building. I think that's where I have some um, issues well. I didn't see um, enough detail in the elevations to really understand how it does relate to the existing building and the adjacent buildings on that rear facade. I just think um, the building itself is more of an historic, and this is more current in, in terms of the materials and the look and the feel of this structure. I think there's, there's a way we can definitely use modern materials, um, as long as they still follow the same rhythm, the same scale, the same proportions, the same datum lines, I issues along those lines, I think um, I would have liked to see more information along that. Uh, the materials, window sizes, and alignment of the trim elements on the addition should be compatible with those of the existing structure. I don't think that complies. Well, I think that it, it is, it's an interesting concept. You know, this, it, this is an, a working alley. And um, I, I think that uh, if containerized shipping had been a thing back in the early 20th century, I'm sure that the uh, owners of these buildings probably would have had containers stuck in the alley at some point. But um, the reality is, it's, um, I mean, that's, it, it, that's not the case. And it is, it is very modern, and, and it is extremely interesting. And um, I don't want to throw the baby out with the bathwater, but, um, you know, it just, the, the mass, the scale, you know, all the, the talk about activating an alley to, to make it an inviting place is, um, is not happening here. And that alley is a resource in this community. There is, um, right now it is, there's dumpsters out there and you know, all kinds of stuff. And you know, it's an alley. But there's just the, the potential for um, activating the alley to, to make it a, a, a usable space and an inviting, uh, engaging space in, in Littleton. Um, I, I think it's really compromised um, by, by that, the presence of, of the container in its current configuration. I'm not opposed to the modern materials and the, the metals and um, the, the concept of integrating more, um, an, a more industrial uh, feel, but um, I just, I don't think that that's, does it. Okay, so in summary, where we're, one of the reasons why we are denying this has to do with it's not compatible with the main building and the mural is compromised. Uh, it becomes more of a private piece of art that was funded by a public show, okay? Criteria three is the proposed work is visually compatible with designated historic structures located in the property, on the property, in terms of design, finished material, scale, mass, and height. I don't think it's compatible. I don't think the materials are compatible. Like you say, not everything, we have to sometimes make things look historic and can't use historic uh, materials, but I don't think this 
uh, follows with design, finish, and materials. Scale, mass, and height are not so much of an issue other than it obscures a mural. And I think that's where, you know, I, I look at it in addition, and I think, uh, you know, the scale, mass, and height are pretty critical. The materials um, can be of, should be differentiating from the original structure, right? So I think it definitely does that. Um, I just didn't see quite enough evidence to see that it's still related to that structure and that mass, especially um, the height, as well as with uh, the adjacent properties. So you're making a case it's more of an issue of mass, scale, and height, mm -hmm. as opposed to, okay, and there's agreement on that. All right. And less on the design because we could, okay. Number four, when the subject site is, is within an historic district, okay, excuse me. The board must find that the proposed work is visually compatible with development on adjacent properties. It's back to my previous statement as well. Okay. Yeah, especially the, the post office. Okay. So really, in our opinion, it does not meet criteria two, three, and four. So I think, Chair, that you need to amend your motion um, because in the original motion, you said it did not comply with all four. And it sounds like based on your discussion, that is not the case. So I think it would be proper for someone to amend the motion uh, to uh, not include that first criteria. And Kim can't do it, so some another board member has to do it. Do you want to go ahead, John? That's right. Thank you. <laughs> So I'd like to amend the motion that we exclude criteria one from the original motion and base our decision based on criteria two, three, and four. Do we have a second? I second. Okay. Now uh, I think we're ready to vote. And do we need to use our? Yes, you do. Okay. And up is we vote for the motion and down as we vote against, right? We're voting on the amendment first and then the motion. Oh, okay, so we need to vote on the amendment first? Okay, do we approve uh, the amendment again? If we approve, it's yes. If we, if we don't agree, it's no, correct? Okay, why don't we go ahead and vote? Okay, hold on. Oh. Chair Grove, it's above your gravel ah. under the papers thank you okay so we all approve the amendment okay so carries. the amendment carries, carries unanimously okay so now we need to uh vote on the motion right that's correct as amended, as amended. pardon you're voting on the motion as amended uh we're going to vote on the motion as amended so the motion is to deny. deny and we amended it that it's based on three criteria not four and so to, to deny, we would vote yes. That's correct. Yes. It's a motion to yes. This is the motion to deny. You're voting on a motion to deny. So yes is to deny. Yes. No is to not deny. Okay. All right, the main motion is unanimous to deny. Okay, so uh, motion carries. I just want to say one thing. I'm very happy that the alley is enjoying such success. That's great. We love it. I hope you find a way to figure out a kitchen and something that you can meet the needs of the uh, public. But thank you very much and congratulations on your award. Okay. Um, if anybody wants to leave, we won't be offended, but you're welcome to stay. Uh, so, should we hear from staff? Dennis, what do you have for us? Uh, first of all, congratulations uh, on the Louthan design guidelines. They were passed unanimously by the Planning Commission last week. Uh, so, they are now official. We're making some additional uh, changes to them that the Planning Commission uh, wanted to ha have included. And then we will actually get those copies distributed and posted online. So, uh, appreciate it. Appreciate all your effort. Um, in terms of making sure that we got a product that was, was a good one. So we're, we're very excited about having those. So thank you for all the work you did. Um, second thing, city council outreach this summer. Kim and I last year staffed the, the booth, uh, the table, um, and we would 
very much welcome. Anybody else? I don't know if Kim can do it. I think she's got some dates that don't work for her, but we have one coming up next Tuesday. Um, and so if uh, anybody is available next Tuesday, the 23rd, uh, it starts at about, I think, 4.30, something like that, as I recall. So uh, we appreciate anybody else help coming out. And it's a great opportunity. I think Kim and I really found that we got to interact with an awful lot of people, had some, you know, a lot of support for historic preservation, uh, great questions in terms of the, the programs and what happens, and, and just a, a lot of interaction. So it was a great experience, I thought. So uh, we would recommend it highly. If it, it Are you able to go next week, Kim? You know, I am not able to go to the one on the 23rd, but I my intention is to attend as many as possible. I found it incredibly valuable. And where is it? Um, next one is at... Uh, I think it's at Kettering Park. I think it's at Kettering. That right? That's one thing, too. I think it's at Kettering. Yeah. Council? Yeah. The next meet greet need is at Kettering Park. Okay. At 6.30, I believe. I think it's earlier. I think is it's, it five, is it early I think, I think it's like 4.30. Yeah. They I catch think they're the, 4.30. Yeah. Four? And how, Four six. how long do they last? Oh, a couple hours. A couple hours. And we and get there a little early just to set up. And but it's goodies. Easy. And you get to meet so many people. They're great fun. Yeah, it goes fast. It goes very quickly. So. Mm -hmm. Does anybody want to go? We have lots of activities that we're working on. I will not be able to. Not available. Okay. Not either. Not next week. Um, I'm I'm happy being there by myself, but it's much better if we get. I think somebody from the board, you're much more let's, interested. Let's pass on this one. I, I'd like to go, but I I have a commitment in the evening. If okay. if something comes up, something changes, okay. I'll let you know. Great, thank you. Otherwise, I'll be there, and then we'll I'll send out the dates for the others as well. So. That would be great. Okay. Thank you. If you can send me those dates, I can put together a sign-up sheet. Sure. That'd be great. Perfect. Thank you. Okay. So, um, okay. Anything else, Dennis? No. I have copies of the uh, work program that uh, we worked on earlier and what, what I think. Can we? Yes. That would be lovely. Yep. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Just so you know, we met. Uh, I met with Andrea, Dennis, and Jocelyn to just review the work plan. And for the new board members... This is kind of the guideline of the projects we do outside of the COAs. And this started years ago with a program called True Grit, where we got community feedback on some of the things that we should be working on. And then we got a consultant involved to help us. And the work plan used to be quite lengthy. It was pages and pages and pages, and we whittled it down. And it's probably time to take a look at it again and see what we want to keep and what we don't want to keep. Dennis worked on updating this, um, but I'd like to kind of go through it yeah. and address some of these issues. So the first one on the list is to increase participation in the Main Street Historic District. We have 31 properties in the district out of 56. Okay, so um, we've made progress. We started with 25. It's an opt-in district, with, which is very unusual. So we've made a concerted effort to try to get more properties in the district. We've done a lot of different things. Uh, we've had a lot of different strategies over the years. We've done things like try to have additional tax credits. We've uh, met with various property owners, and we still do that on an ongoing basis. At one point, about two years ago, when Chuck Reed was chair, we actually spent the majority of our efforts on this, and we since then it kind of put it on a brick, uh, back burner a little bit. We have had some recent uh, property owners come in. Bristol Cone came in, and... Um, Oh, the new valley, the replacement for the valley feet. So we have had some new ones. So in terms of looking at this, uh, so we, and you put that we continue to participate in the downtown uh, retailers meeting, the hoodlum meetings, and that's the first Wednesday at 8 o'clock. And I find those very interesting, and I do have a sign-up sheet here. we like somebody to go from every one of um, from our meet, if you want to go for a meeting, so I'll, I'll give this to you. And we just go, and I, you need to let me know that you will attend. And then I, Greg Ranke puts us on uh, the agenda. And 
we'll give you bullet points to say, like we might want to uh, talk about some of our um, recent accomplishments like the HLI awards or something along those lines. So um, let me know if you're going to go. Is there anything else uh, that we need to look at as a board in terms of helping to increase participation in the Main Street District? And the key, just a, a kind of a review, the key benefits are, um, let's see if I can talk, tax credits, um, participation in the grant program, uh, a parking, reduction in parking, what am I, oh, and then those are more the quantitative ones, and the qualitative ones is a participation in the district, maintaining property values, people adhere to the look and feel and the character of the community. So those are the kind of the high-level benefits. And, and sometimes like an offhanded conversation that you had at one of these uh, meetings or at a huddle meetings can lead to somebody being more interested in joining in the district. So any thoughts about that? Summed it up well? Yeah, just, I guess there's no specific initiative. Is that what I'm hearing? And just continue on that and continue going to the huddle of meetings. Uh, identified structures uh, that should be considered for landmark designation. Uh, I had a meeting with uh, the president of HLI and one of the other board members because we're working together on the tour. And what we'd like to do is have a joint meeting. We thought we'd have it in the fall and talk about how we might work together on historic uh, landmarks and districts, whether we look at recommendations, how we get recommendations, whether we meet and maybe do some site visits. And then in addition at that meeting, we would look at um, the tours and, and talk about the awards and just working together with them. And Historic Littleton Inc., just so you know, is um, works to maintain the historic character of the greater Littleton District. And they usually work through, uh, if they're a membership organization, they work through education and advocacy. They're not quasi-judicial like us. So they're a, a, a separate group, but we have overlapping interests. So Dennis, I was hoping we could get a meeting, uh, meeting space for that third weekend at the third Wednesday. You bet. Is it the September 23rd? Okay, yeah, we can get that. And my, my vision was that we meet at six and have some sort of social, I don't know if we have any budget to have little appetizers or something, and then at 6.30 have a formal meeting that maybe lasted till eight. And just get a name with a face since we have so many overlapping projects. Right now, Michael is our rep, Michael Price, who can't, couldn't be here tonight, is our representative, and he goes to their meetings, which are the third Wednesday at 4.30, and then I'm his backup if he can't go. So, Dennis, you'll find out about that. By the way, we'll probably be in the community room. Uh, that would be wonderful if we could get that. Good. And if you could let us know, um, that would work. Good, absolutely. Thank you. Uh, the Main Street Grant Program, uh, do you want to give us an update on that? Sure. The applications are out. Uh, they are due back uh, the day after Labor Day, okay. Memorial Day, one of those things, Memorial Day. I always get this confused. So it's the 30th, I believe, of, of May. And then we will have the first uh, discussion of those and review of those at the June meeting and a decision made at the July meeting. So it's an opportunity at the June meeting for the applicants to come. We actually require the applicants to be present uh, for the board so that you can ask questions and get more information. And then you have time in the next month to go out and actually visit the site and look and think about it uh, and think about any other review you want to do. And then we come back and the applicants are not required to come to the second meeting, but the board then makes a decision and an allocation at that meeting. So. Okay. And we usually get more requests than we have money for. We don't have $50,000, and we can apportion it based on need and, and, and other criteria. So it's nice to be able to give people money. And one of our big awards, there was many awards last year, but one of the big ones was for the Gris Bristlecone building. Um, before we leave HLI, I should ask Sonia if you had anything that you wanted to discuss uh, we have a meeting this week again and I don't have anything new I told you before that we would were wanting to designate the post office and Gail 
says that the ordinance says that you, your committee, can nominate it. And we'll have to research that. For local designation, yes. Okay. So what I, we need. That we'll have to have, we're, we're working on getting the documents together. And it's probably going to be into the summer because she's gone for this month. And So what is the process? I know Michael, we, we, we went back and forth with Michael. Yeah. And uh, Michael said that Dennis suggested he not do it. So I think we can probably pick up on, on getting the little one prepared too. But uh, So now it, it, it's us, but they're going to help provide the documents? So. Yeah, I, I think it's better just because you will be voting on it. Uh -huh. um, and so you can nominate, uh, which is an interesting situation to be in, but it can be either city council, the property owner, or the HPP can actually nominate properties for... for um, so we will nominate. Right, it's, as a possibility. I mean, it's always best, I think, if, uh, if the owner will, will you know, actually apply for it. That's the best to nominate it. We're feeling uh, that's unlikely not. to happen with the Postal Service. We did have Representative Kaufman visit, and he wrote a really steamy letter to the to the Postmaster General about the condition of the post office. And uh, I don't know whether that's going to have any result or not. He did get picked up on Channel 2 following his visit. Uh, and they had the spokesperson for the post office saying they're not going to be moving anywhere, which we had heard possibly they were going to eventually. In any case, we'd like to get it designated. And there are 1,500 post offices in the country that have been designated. Dennis came up with that figure. So we'll be reporting on that. I'm, I'm going to write the narrative, and Dale, Gail's doing the... The other stuff, and I think then that that will we can take pieces of that to for the Littleton application, also. Diane Tomasa, who's doing the survey for Littleton Boulevard corridor, uh, actually did the nomination for Englewood Post Office, and is very interested in the uh, Littleton Post Office as well. And actually attended a meeting of HLI, and, and so I, there's a lot of support for this, which is great, and a lot of expertise available. Dennis, can I just, uh, I've actually been looking into this today for, um, Dennis asked me a question about this, and I will note to the board that there is a section in our code, 4-6-11B uh, is designation without owner's consent, so we do have something in our code for how to move forward if the owner is not on board with designating the building. The owner's the federal government, though, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Yes, yes, that is correct, <laughs> which uh, may, I'm looking into any other potential um, wrinkles that may be involved with this. Well, if, if Inglewood did it, I mean, if we follow that same process, why couldn't we? Well, I think there's a difference between, I think Inglewood did national, I'm not sure they did local, so we need to figure out who's done local and who's done national. Um, so we're doing local. Oh we're, oh, we're doing both. But you would be dealing with the designation for the local. For the local. For the local only, right. So. So Michael should get with you, Sonia? I've been emailing with him. Okay. Uh, but he, uh, I think he said that Dennis advised him he should not get involved in preparing it. And I think that Gail and I can prepare the documentation when, because we're, we've met with uh, Jenny at the museum and pulled up a lot of material. And so uh, I have to sit down and start writing and she's going to do the, she's dealt, done this before and knows how to uh, proceed. So once she gets back from her trip to Florida, wherever she's gone, uh, we'll pick up on it again. So for anyone who doesn't, it's Gail Keeley, who's the new uh, president of HLI. So we're talking about with Gail. So. Oh, that, uh, Gail's the one that's gone. Correct. Mm -hmm. I didn't think she's very gone very long, like a week and a half. Lake Powell. <laughs> okay. So um, when Gail oh, and, gets back... And again, just to clarify, uh, you will make a recommendation to city council. City council would do local right. designation. Okay, Okay, but um, there was a question on how Michael thought he couldn't work on it. Now we get to tell Michael he can work on it. Sonia's going to author it, and then he will actually do the formal nomination. Well, I'll talk to Lena Moore and, and, and Brandon just to see how much he can do since you guys will actually do the review. I don't, I don't know. 
it, it's it's unclear with the yeah. nomination. And yeah. we need to talk to Jocelyn more about this process too. I think it's very premature to say that we're going to do it one way or another. And um, this is the fact that we're looking into it. So. So we're back to square one. We don't know. Yeah, we, we need direction from council as well here. So I, just really premature um, about which way we're going to go with this, but we'll keep the board informed. Okay, so so you'll let us know maybe next time. But in, that doesn't stop Sonia from no, going and oh, writing no. it. Uh, HLI can continue its process, um, but our internal process need to be vetted both with council and then also internally. Um, so I wouldn't say we're definitely doing it one way or another. So we need to... <laughs> Gail says it's back in your court, Pam. So now, now we need to say, Gail, no, we we can continue working on it. HLI can work on it, but we can't. We don't have a ruling from correct. This is staff not attorney a, whether correct. how how much we can do HLI the nomination. HLI continue its okay. process. I, I just don't want to commit this board or this city um, to say we're going to pursue any sort of uh, process. There's still a lot of uh, work we need to do to figure out uh, which way we go forward. Well, we need, I, I hope to clarify, if I can find someone at the post office to talk to, I do did find a number. I'm going to try, if I could get through to the somebody at the Highlands Ranch post office, that our postmaster for Littleton, maybe we could get some direction, but I'm, I'm doubtful about that. I, um, I, there was an, actually an employee that emailed me. And right, he, I know who that was. Okay, so I don't know if he can help. He might be able to direct you to the person now. Oh, I, I have a number now. I did find that just the other day, and so uh, I'll maybe just try and go make an appointment to go down there if I can, but uh, I don't know of this the permit business. I, I'm, I will also consult with Diane Tommaso about that. Her concern about the Littleton Post Office was that the mural had been removed, and she felt that was, it was the fact that the Englewood Post Office still had the mural was critical to its being accepted as a national oh. uh, register building, but uh, we can't do anything about that. Here it is right here. <laughs> okay. All right. So just to conclude, Sonia is going to continue to work with Gail and the post office as far as she can, and then we'll wait for a ruling from a staff city council. Okay. Thank you very much, Sonia, for your help. Uh, walking tours. Uh, I have a little bit of feedback from our last walking tours. Uh, they were, I think, uh, very successful for the, for, for the beginning. Uh, we had um, only two people at 530, but then there was about six or eight at six o'clock. 630 was about the same. And um, the 7 o'clock had a little bit fewer, like 6 or 8. So total was about 30. Very good for our first time out. Uh, there was actually somebody waiting for a 7.32 tour because on next door, Mark Berenson said that the tours went from 5 to 9. So Mark is going to call them and clarify them that they only go uh, 5 to 7. Uh, what else? Oh, we're going to continue. Uh, they're going to put, try to put some signs down on Main Street. There was a sign right there. Uh, also, um, we want, HLI really wants at least two people available at every time. I, I think that's kind of a lot to ask. Like some people, everybody came at 5.15 and Margie did the last tour and wasn't done until 7.30. So that was kind of a long evening. Um, but if we do get a lot of people, they can't hear. So um, kind of one thing at a time. Uh, I think August is going to be our toughest time. We signed up to have tours on Western Welcome. Those will be the complete tours. So those would be a 4 o'clock tour, a 5 o'clock tour, and a 6 o'clock tour. Thursday night, August 17th. I just got my paperwork in today. And uh, those were big. Those were 50 people each. So we pretty much need most people that have been trained to do that. And HLI has quite a few people. So I wanted to look at the most... Uh, the only person from our group is Mike was going to do a tour. David, you were going to be a backup? Um, in June. 
Uh, in June. August, I, I was unclear no. on my oh, excuse me. there. Okay, so uh, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm talking June 2nd? Yeah. Okay. D did you have training or did you not? Not yet, no. Okay, so, and, and if you want to train, you can just come and attend if, if you wanted to. Um, and are you going to be here? Are you available or no? I, I don't know at this point. Okay, well, I could, I could be the second one. I just wanted to give other people the opportunity. I didn't know about Dan. Dan's been trained, obviously. And who else? I, I don't think Ted has. Right? No, I don't. I don't okay. Think, I'm not aware. So um, I'll go ahead and put myself down and tell HLI that we have um, two people and see who else uh, we have. Okay. And then we had, we were also, so we also had Western Welcome, do I have? Oh, the way I have the Western Welcome booth and the historic tours, and I don't have that sheet. I'll have to get that one. So uh, we also have the Western Welcome booth, and HLI will help us that. We've got the morning all set. We don't have anybody um, in the afternoon. So maybe we'll think about that, but that's kind of far away. All right? Continuing on. Um, I'll grab that, the hoodlum one. And I'll see if anybody else wants to come. The Historic Preservation Awards, um, they turned out to be really very nice. We had them at the Littleton Museum with a wonderful uh, spread of food. And um, there was non-alcoholic drinks, but it was lovely. You could eat dinner. Uh, we, uh, Gail and I kind of tag teamed it. Uh, we made the presentation to our three uh, pres uh, award winners. And, and the interim gave a uh, discussion of some of the historic stories and buildings in downtown Littleton. So it was pretty well received. We almost had a full room. The only thing that was disappointing was the uh, Historic Preservation Board was very underrepresented. I was the only one there. So hopefully we can continue on and maybe next year do a better showing. I don't know what it's going to look like. Uh, it's usually spearheaded by HLI and the hows and whens uh, of that have not been determined. Maybe that's something we can look at at our meeting in the fall. And it, how we do it, uh, Margie's done it year after year. It's quite a bit of work in terms of getting the, the word out, to the postcard. She wrote the script. So she wrote, she and um, Becky Cass wrote a one-hour script. So that's a lot of work. Yeah. It, 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 but it was, it was really very good. And the winners were Bristol Cone, the city, and then there was two individual winners, um, Cronenberger. What's her name? What's her first name? Pat Cronenberger and Pat. Susan Thornton. Pat who Cronenberger both been and Susan Thornton. Mayor and council yeah. members for years. And, yes. And that says advocates. And there, there was a lot of ex council members there. It was really very cool. Yeah, they award council members past and present, and there were quite a few of them there. Yes. And it was it was a wonderful event. So I highly encourage you to think about coming next year, whenever it is. Next thing is uh, using the city's website, uh, Channel 8, and brochures to promote the benefits of historic preservation. And uh, we've been working on our different brochures. And Dennis, I didn't know how the one was coming for, you were updating the ones for the district, right? C correct. And, and Kel um, Kim and Jocelyn and Andrew and I are we're going to set a meeting where we get together and kind of think about the whole structure as well as probably have Jennifer over from the museum um, and think how we all work together on this. The museum at this point doesn't have any brochures of their own, uh, but we're thinking that you know, it, it's a great opportunity to work together, I think, with staff. But their brochures would be different than ours, weren't they? It, it, probably in terms of uh, when we talk about doing a historic, you know, just history of Littleton, that might be more the museum than it is us, for example. So. I would say that the museum brochure is going to be separate. Um, we kind of have the, uh, you know, the, the um, three uh, brochures that we've talked about, and we have two new board members who also want to be part of that process. And, and um, you know, we... Well, and, and so if you want to pull in one of them, if there's interest, Jolene or Amy, in working yes. on that project. Yes. Very much so. They, they've both expressed that. Okay. Interest, so. The only issue is... That 
if you three meet, you have to post. So just give them two weeks notice. Right. right. No problem. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. So we'll um, continue on that. And then we have, um, we were going to do it, but our meetings, um, we, we had a COA tonight, but there's a lot of videos on the website and brochures and information. And um, Dennis, you want to speak to that? Yeah, Andrew has been, uh, he's going to be meeting with Kelly to talk about that. I'll pass it over to her. So. For the videos? Yeah. Yeah, yeah so um, I've worked with our communications department just today, as a matter of fact. And we got a hold of a number of historic preservation videos that the city has put together over the year. Wonderful. Some of them are already in circulation. And so what we're going to do is um, run them more frequently. And on the screen, there will be a banner that will say, are you aware that May is Historic Preservation Month? We also talked about maybe we might uh, be able to do a couple more things for next year. We obviously have a lot of time to work on that, but just off the top of our heads, we thought, well, maybe there might be some sort of a slideshow that would show the historic landmarks in the city and perhaps a little bit about them and or the date that they were designated as a landmark. So I think there, there's probably more that we can be doing. We just need to find the time and get organized around it for next year. Well, and we might want to, just a thought, coordinate that with the awards Maybe it's running in the background. Maybe it's part of the presentation, but since it's already there. Jenny at the museum had a slideshow that night of all the it's really good. All the uh, historic monuments in, in Littleton. Right, well, this would like be videos that, you know, would be well, the same, only different, yeah. Yeah, no, that, that would be wonderful. So we can definitely get And um, I don't know, so many of us have worked with Dennis over the years. I don't know if you're familiar with Andrea. Andrea used to support us a long time ago, and they're in the process of cross-training and um, preparing for the time when uh, Dennis uh, will retire. So she's starting to get up to speed and will be attending our meetings and starting to support us. So uh, for those of you that haven't met Andrea. Uh, Historic preservation pages on the website. I think that's all kind of part of the whole ongoing website. And in preparation for the tours, I refer to the website a lot. When I didn't feel like I had enough information on Alfred Packard, I went there and looked at some more information. So it's very good. Uh, entry signs for Arapaho Hills Historic District. Dennis, do you want to talk a little bit about that? Yeah, that's, it's it's probably more just staff at this point, and I probably should take it off of here. But okay. uh, Public Works has been very supportive. We we just need to figure out what kind of sign we want and and where it goes and and where, or where the signs go. There should be multiple, probably. Uh, we have a very nice sign, I think, for for Louthan, and we do something similar, only indicating that it's National Historic District instead of local. So, so you're going to work on that, yeah, and getting that sign. Okay. Um, Plaques for properties in the Main Street District. Andrea, did you find out anything about that? Like, can we get a some estimates so that we can put in for budget with the city? I know you had a stack. Maybe it's just a matter of, I know there's a lot of issues around that. Yes, I think first we need to get organized around it and decide what we want before we can move on to bids. As of right now, we do have a stack of, I'm going to guess, about four or five plaques that are available to us for any new designations. And then I think at our meeting we talked about a couple of possibilities, and one would be to, in, um, in addition to the plaque that says Historic Landmark, uh, perhaps there might be some text about the landmark itself or the date that it was designated as a landmark. And then um, there are issues, too, of seeing what we have out there. Are there any landmarks that are missing, so, um, or plaques, rather, that are missing so that we can incorporate that to the budget? So it'll take staff a little while, in other words, to, to be able to put this together. And we would like input from the board on what we'd like to see in terms of information on those plaques. And, and I think what the board has talked about in the past, in the last couple of years, was um, not just our individual landmarks, but also the buildings that are within the district, the ones that have opted in. So we would have plaques for those as well and might have, as Andrea said, the text information. 
um, whereas the ones that we have now are just for the individual landmarks. So it's a, it's a little expansion upon that. Um, and it's, if you've seen other communities, I'm sure you have, they, some of them will have photographs, the historic photographs of the buildings. We don't always have those, but we might have something for some of them at least. And so we ha have to do that research, as Andrew said. If we don't have it for everyone, we probably we may not be able to do it at all. It might be better not to have any rather than have it inconsistent. So, so. it's a matter of seeing what we have and seeing who we'd want to approach. In other words, how many landmark buildings have them and how many don't. So it's that study. And then the next step is, do we want to take one of yours that you already have or do a new one with some information, get the budget, and then approach the property owner? Is that kind of the steps? That's right. Okay, so... We almost have to do a survey, but the budget time is coming up. So when is the deadline for budget? Well, it starts, yes, yeah, it's in process now for 2018. So uh, it, it deadline typically, the sooner the better. Um, but we, we could probably we talk to Jocelyn and see if it's possible to put kind of a holder in there. Um, just until we... So, when I, so I need to call Jocelyn? Yeah, we'll, we'll talk to her too. And, she, and she's watching, so... <laughs> She's watching us, Jocelyn. <laughs> uh, so we need to talk to Jocelyn and ask her about the budget process. Do you have any thoughts about a smaller plaque, a bigger plaque? For the Desert Dixon, I think it should be in line with what's already out there. There's both. both. Isn't there both? Yeah. We have several different types of plaques that are out there, and probably we want to take a look at what they are, and we want to see uh, what we have missing. Another issue that came up when I worked with plaques before is that some buildings don't have a lot of room for a plaque to be affixed to them. And so that's going to come into play, particularly when we start looking at adding text to them. Um, I would suggest that next time you're down on Main Street, you take a look at the two different plaques that are on Main Street. And the one, the largest plaque that we have is on the, um, the town hall. And that does have some text associated with it. So take a look at that and see, see if you like that. And um, it was a reasonably priced plaque at the time. We were on a bit of a budget. And so if we like that, perhaps we might be able to work within that style. How much was it way back when? I'm going to guess that they were in the neighborhood of $90 a piece. And then, uh, then if we target a building, and then we have to ask the property owner, and then we have to see if there's room, and then who actually puts it up? Because wasn't there an issue about who is responsible for putting it up and maintaining it? Correct. Yeah, if, if the city puts it up, there's some liability that goes with that if the property owner goes up. So we need to talk about that as well and, and, and talk to Brandon and Lena and just see yeah, what, what their recommendation is on that as well. So what kind of agreement we have to have with, with the property owner. So It just seems if we don't get as far as budget, we won't be able to do it. Right, absolutely. And Unless this is a next year project, we do the research this year and then right. put in so, for budget next year. Yeah, we talked to Josh again about a placeholder. Okay. If we, if we get an estimate, yeah, we can start. It, yeah, with, if you could do an we estimate. We could always phase it over the years. Too, so. Another thing for the budget is we were going to ask for an extra $25,000 for grant money and ask him for seventy five. We don't know if we're going to get it, but I'd like to start the process of asking. So maybe eventually we'll get it, if not this year. And Jocelyn asked for more last year as well. So. Oh, okay. okay. So she'd ask again. Yeah. Maybe eventually we'll get it. All right. Wonderful. Uh, plaques. Uh, have, we have somebody attending monthly meetings. Uh, any thoughts on meetings with city council? City council is going to turn over in November. So we, for those that are, you are new, we usually meet with them, kind of let them know what we're doing. They give us input. We take it back sometimes, put it in the work plan, or respond to that. Another thing that we might want to consider putting as more of a long-term thing is the alley work. We had um, a board member, Sharon. Do, do you have that PowerPoint? I do. Mm -hmm, sure, I do. Um, can you send that out? Sure. Uh, there was a board member, Sharon Gare, who did an alley 
analysis of what Fort Collins has done, and it was a wonderful PowerPoint. And that might be something that we might want to look in in the future, be it murals, be encouraging people to develop their alleys as nice walkways, maybe even outdoor patios, whatever. There's, there's a lot of different options. And we decided to give it to another board, I think. How, how come we passed it off? Who did we pass it off to? Well, I, I, I don't know that we passed it off as much. We actually had a position that the board took, voted on. And so you do have a resolution for uh, position just in terms of support for alley. Uh, activation and what that means and when it does come up, the, the Historical Preservation Board is, is typically supportive of it. Um, I think what you may be referring to is there was a grant program that we thought you know, might be used and that's what was used for the mural. Um, other than that, uh, it, it is a complex issue when you get into alleys just because, as you all know and, and have said tonight, they're used for everything. They're used for you know, city utilities, they're used for uh, private utilities, they're used for trash collection, which is private, they're used for all these things, as well as access and service and you know, providing you know, uh, daily deliveries to all these businesses. So there's an awful lot of activity that goes on in these alleys, so it's, it's complex, but uh, as, as, you, as you know, other cities have accomplished this, and it goes over time, and I think that alley, particularly, we don't have a lot of alleys that work terribly well. There's not one on the north, for example, outside of Maine. Um, there's some that are perpendicular to, to Maine there, but there's nothing that uh, actually runs parallel to it, like the one on the south. It runs all the way from, you know, to Bega Park and all the way down to, you know, basically to, to Santa Fe. So it goes all the way to, to RAP. Um, so it, it's a great opportunity, I think. And as we um, see some additional redevelopment along Alamo, which I think we will over time, Again, trying to think about how do we interface with that. It just seems like a great thing to do. And part of it will be historic, part of it will not be. But uh, certainly the Main Street portion of it is critical. And it w we, our resolution was to what? It, basically, it's kind of a general resolution. Uh -huh. It's kind of saying that the board, and I'll, I can send you that copy too of what that is. It basically saying that the, the board supports activating the alleys and, and that uh, whatever that might mean, that that's it, kind of a general position, uh, that you're not opposed to it. There was some, you know, thought that uh, the Historical Preservation Board may think that's problematic to activate the alleys, uh, and and you made a statement to say no. We, we actually support it. We think it's a great thing to do. So. And and that might be something we work on HLI. Maybe it's an awareness thing. Mm -hmm. It's something where we communicate to people to think about developing their alleys for more than just garbage cans. So I, I don't know what that we want that to look like. Okay, uh, and are we any closer to a meeting with City Council, or that's a Jocelyn thing? I, I don't know that we are. No, I haven't heard. We do have uh, determination uh, negotiating now with Mark uh, Ralph to be the city manager, and so I think you're kind of waiting to to have uh, Mark in place and, and then uh, make that decision at that point with the timing in. So so that's kind of put off a little bit. A okay. little bit, yeah. Uh, let's see, anything else? Uh, one thing um, that has come up is site visits, where maybe we take a tour of downtown Littleton as a group before a meeting or as part of a meeting and look at the alleys yeah. and maybe look at some of the plaques. Yeah. Uh, Great idea. Yeah. That's probably best to do summertime. Right. It's probably best to do on a night where we don't have a COA. So I don't know uh, how we can make that happen. Uh, we could just schedule something. Uh, for uh, June is always nice. Um, and we, we just need to notice it and be part of the no public notice we do for the meeting. So we could do that. Yeah, would we would advise the board that if there's more than three members there, it'd be a public meeting. We'd have to notice it. Yeah. yeah. But would it be possible? I don't know what people's work schedule to meet at 530 at downtown little walk around. Or, yeah, or even five. Now, June and July are both you know, fairly busy meetings because June you're going to have uh, the grants. Uh, in July you have the decision on the grants and we'll have at least one COA uh, in July. And we may have two in July. We may have one in June. I don't think we're going to. So we're, we're busy with sales. I, I hate to ask people to take too much time away because we're asking for time for some of these things. So what is your thinking on doing something like that? No, I think that's a great idea. I, I think meeting, meeting early on a meeting night is reasonable. 
Okay. Because we, we'll be here anyway, just a yeah. little bit early. All right, Absolutely. so Dennis, let's think about the logistics. Maybe Andrea, you have some ideas. Maybe we can have a quick meeting on what that looks like so that we're very structured. I mean, because people have their, they leave from their cars here. Mm -hmm. So if we meet here and walk all the way up, Right. That is going to take extra time, so it is a little bit of logistics. It takes 10 minutes. Each week, oh, okay. Basically, yeah, so. With the group. So if you can send those that alley report out, that would be great. Uh, to go to office meeting date. Oh, um, some of us attended the boards and commissions training, and those of us that, ha and I hadn't done it for a while, a couple things that uh, staff is really emphasizing is that we adhere to our protocol for our meetings. And Brandon and team do a very good job of keeping us on track. And the second thing is that we really need to use our city email. Kim is the best at this. Um, the downside is if ever there's an issue, they could seize your whole email. So we want to stay away from personal email and really try to make a concerted effort. And I get on and I just want to email people and I jump on my city email. Uh, but this protects all of us. And I think if you want to work around, you can copy yourself so you know when something's coming in, but then go back on your email and then have it from there so that you can say with confidence that all city business is conducted through your city email. So just a quick reminder on that. Does anybody have anything else? All right, let's go ahead and adjourn the meeting. Thank you very much.